Hi, this is Brian Russell with Streamside Solutions. This video is going to talk about prepping a server with the appropriate prerequisites and features and roles prior to starting the uh, events to HVAC installation. An overview of uh, what you're going to see is uh, how to select the server roles and features. Um, making sure the right framework is installed, uh, enabling the MSMQ, the message queuing feature in the server, and then uh, deploying your local SQL Express database. We're going to use SQL Express 2012 for this, and uh, adjusting the permissions and opening up firewalls uh, for SQL access for remote clients and uh, something to consider also uh, this is just a basic prerequisite installation there may be other steps uh, in the actual interfaces that you're deploying so uh, your event provider may have some prereqs uh, needed in addition to this that we're not going to cover in this video uh, same goes with your device interfaces uh, th there might be some additional software to install prior to starting the main installation. The estimated time for this process is uh, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and uh, a typical IT person can handle most of the procedures in this video. Okay, we're going to start out with a SQL Server 2012 Foundations operating system on a virtual machine. And uh, our first step is to load up the prerequisites and uh, assign the right features and roles to the virtual machine. So let's look at the roles by opening up the Server Manager. And when that comes up, we're going to select the Add Roles and Feature Features item. And just click through, select your server, and then. Uh, You can see this is an has an application server installed. Uh, you'll want to uh, select that and also um, add the .NET Framework 4.5. It's shown here already installed. Um, so I'm going to skip over to the features, and here's where message queuing is located message queuing servers and you just want to install the core message queuing which is the server only and hit next and you might need to restart and install Okay, that installed. We can close Server Manager now. And the next step is to install SQL Server Express. And I'm going to install that locally. Uh, if you need to, you can install your own full version if you want, or you can use a remote SQL Server uh, as your uh, database server it's up to IT department but here we're going to just install SQL Server Express 2012 and we downloaded the, it's the free version and we downloaded it with the uh, tools so the WT means with tools and that will give 
the uh, SQL Server Management Studio client um, included in, the, in with that install. So we're going to double click that and get this rolling. going to install a new SQL Server standalone installation. Next. Okay, I'm going to leave these selected like they are. Also note that all these prerequisites are already installed. If, if they weren't installed, you would have to go and uh, reinstall those prior to uh, running SQL Server Setup. So I'm going to click Next. And I'm going to keep the default and the named inst instance for SQL Express, or you can use the default instance, which um, wouldn't have the uh, prefix or the or the suffix uh, SQL Express after the instance. I'm going to keep the uh, defaults here. And on this screen, I'm going to select Mix Mode. And I'm going to put in a uh, administrator account password. And then I can add uh, Windows users as admins too if you want to do that. I'm going to keep my name in there. Hit next. Okay, now that we've installed SQL Server Express, uh, we want to open up SQL Server Management Studio and I'm going to show you uh, a permission on a Windows credential you, that you need to change uh, before you do the events to HVAC install. And SQL Server Management Studio. Alright, so it defaults to logging in the uh, server instance name that we created when we installed. 
and it's using Windows authentication on my Windows account which is an, an, an ad, admin account so I'm going to go ahead and connect with that and you can see we've got a system database in place uh, we don't ha have our events to HPC database yet but uh, one thing to note on uh, server 2012 and up they removed one of the Windows login system logins that we'll need for our Windows service for events to HPC so we're gonna go in and um, looks like it's already in there but uh, we're gonna double click on the NT authority system this is the credential that the Windows service uh, uses to uh, connect to the database and in 2012 they don't they only give it a public role so we're gonna add the sysadmin role to this so that service can do anything uh, with this uh, SQL instance um, if your IT uh, requirements have different security procedures uh, you'll want to follow them but um, this will allow our Windows service to start up when we do the initial install otherwise you'll get a nasty error in the log file and the service will never start up and it's kinda hard it's not an obvious error unless you look at the log file so this will prevent that and we'll hit OK there and we're ready to move to the next section okay uh, if you plan on deploying a events to HPAC client remotely from the server you're gonna need to make sure the SQL server instance uh, accepts remote connections so the first step in that is to go to uh, SQL server management studio and click on the uh, the instance right click properties and then go to uh, connections and make sure the allow remote connections to this server is checked the next step is to uh, make sure the uh, SQL server is uh, listening on uh, the uh, TCP IP ports so we're gonna go to the uh, start menu SQL Server Configuration Manager and you want to select the network configuration and protocols for SQL Express and I you want to definitely turn TCP IP on and I usually turn name pipes on too and then uh, under IP addresses you want to make sure your IP address is enabled uh, this is defaulting to dynamic ports uh, we're gonna want to fix that make that blank um, on the dynamic ports and then put in a TCP port 14 33 which is the default SQL server port and hit apply and you'll need to restart the SQL service to make that change and you can do that by clicking on SQL server services find the uh, SQL server express instance and you see it's running now so we're going to restart that okay now we should be able to connect remotely to this uh, SQL instance now that we've made uh, remote connections available in SQL Server 
Uh, we need to make sure there's no firewall rules blocking uh, that connection. So we're going to go to Server Manager, Tools, Windows Firewall, <coughs> and we're going to create an inbound rule. So a new rule, and this is going to be a port. next and TCP and we're going to specify port 1433 is the default SQL TCP port allow the connection and we're gonna select domain and private connections and we're gonna name this uh, SQL Server TCP fourteen thirty three, and I also add in the SQL browser port, which is a UDP fourteen thirty four, also. Okay, so we should be good to go on remote connections. Okay, to wrap up this video, uh, we prepped the server with all the prerequisites and identified the correct features and roles to apply to it. Installed SQL Server as our local database uh, repository. Defined the permissions and uh, optionally uh, added remote connections for if we're deploying the remote client. The next video in the series will go over the initial deployment using the installer and uh, doing the uh, initial steps of uh, configuring the interfaces both on the event provider and the device interfaces. Thank you for watching.